You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 203. And today, let's talk about scaling your business without sacrificing your clients' results. Are you ready for some awesome growth? Then let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Hey, are you a thought leader, creative entrepreneur, or change maker and want to magnify your impact, boost influence while creating a financial abundance? Stay tuned for today's inspiring episode with your host, Melanie Benson. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. We are almost to the end of 2020 here, and now is the perfect time to be thinking about how you're going to be scaling your business. Now, what is scaling? That's a term that you're like, I hear this all the time. I don't really know what it means. Scaling means that you're exponentially able to grow the reach, the impact, and the revenues without working more in your business. And it's such an extraordinary concept. It's the ultimate in how you leverage your time and your talent. And for me, scaling your business has always been uh, important because I want to make a great impact in the world, but doing it without sacrificing results. So when my friend Jane Sagovich Uh, came in and wanted to talk about scaling. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's brilliant what you're doing. I had to bring her on the podcast. So how do we know it's time to scale? How do we know we're ready to scale? These are the kinds of questions that we need to ask ourselves. And oftentimes we wait too long to do these things. And that means we're not able to amplify our reach. It's one of the most common questions that comes up in the Amplify Mastermind and in Amplify Inner Circle, which we'll be opening the doors to very soon. And if you are not yet in my email community, so that means you've been a great fan of the show, but you haven't yet jumped on one of my gifts and come over to the email side of my communications, then you're gonna be missing out on the opportunities to jump in to Inner Circle and special events that I host from time to time like the upcoming Create Your Own Economy giveaway. So here's the best place to get started. Head over right now to yourrevenuerush.com. This tool is one of my tried and true proven tools. It seems to be the absolute favorite of my community. And inside what you'll find are 10 of the techniques I use to create a fast injection of cash into my business. They are uh, proven either through my own business or the businesses of my clients or both. I've been using some of these since the beginning of my business 20 years ago. Some of them are newer. But what I will tell you is this. If you have unpredictable cash flow, you do launches, you find that you're susceptible to a big client leaving from time to time and really impacts your cash, then you definitely want to have your toolbox full of these kinds of techniques. And this is absolutely free at yourrevenuerush.com. Now let's turn to the master and find out how to scale your business without sacrificing client results. Welcome back, Amplifiers. I'm excited to talk today with a friend of mine about scaling your business without sacrificing client results. Let me introduce you to my friend, Jane Saglovich. Now, she's the founder of Scale Your Genius and the creator of the Thriving Online Program Blueprint, powered by an an unwavering belief that we each get to create the life and business of our dreams. She inspires and guides clients towards creating their personal versions of their dream businesses, where they can scale their impact, maximize their wealth, and live a life of freedom and contribution. Jane, as a business strategist and scaling expert, loves guiding experts who are ready to further their reach using their wisdom and expertise and design a life of abundance and freedom using her proprietary thriving online program blueprint. She's got over 15 years in high level corporate roles, six years as a business owner and entrepreneur, an MBA, a CFA. She's a badass. Let's bring Jane into the conversation. Glad you're here today, Jane. Thank you so much for having me, Melanie. I'm really excited. Now, you're originally from the Ukraine and now live in Colorado. Little bit of a culture shift, I would imagine. Huge culture shift. Yeah. And I, <laughs> we made the transition when I was 10 years old. So, you know, if you think back on, on, on 
being in middle school and being in sixth grade, it's uh, not, not the time I would pick to make such a transition, but I'm totally grateful and glad to be here now. Yeah. I never picked up that uh, accent ever. And so when I saw that, I was like, huh, I would never have known you sound Colorado-ish. <laughs> most people, yeah, most people never hear it. Some people guess Jersey, but that's about the furthest mm. people guess. Okay. Which would be completely wrong. Or did you live in Jersey too? I have never lived in Jersey. Okay. All right then. Well, we're talking about scaling your business. And I know one of the foundations that you use to do that is online courses. Tell me a little bit about how you like got to this place where you're leveraging online courses to help people scale their businesses in your own business. Mm, Absolutely. So I, I love this question because it's when I, so I left corporate six years ago and I started a business with a now ex-business partner and we were delivering our services in the more trans, uh, traditional in-person model. We had an amazing model that he actually had created for in-person group events that was um, really powerful and really uh, really transformational for our clients who were owners of small businesses. And during that time, we really saw a lot of our clients not being willing to put in as much in time, in person time as we needed them to for the program to really work. And that was really one of our biggest objections on sales calls. It was one of the toughest things was for them to get together in person several times a year. And at the same time, being new to entrepreneurship was playing the new mindset game and taking so many online courses and online programs um, just for myself as a client. And then one day came to the realization of, well, would this work for our model? You know, could we get rid of the biggest objection that we have in our business, which is people not being willing or able to travel a few times a year to see us? into um, really delivering the services online. And so we spent the last year or so of us working together, really thinking through this model and trying to make it work. And at the same time, researching the resources out there, none of which fit my needs. And so I think as a lot of you know new products, new services that come out, as we try, we, we look for the solution and when we can't find it, we create our own. Um, so we created our own model. We created our own way to take that work online. And that business, unfortunately, um, Im- imploded uh, at this point, two and a half, almost three years ago. And when I was in a place of not really knowing what the next thing was going to be, not knowing what I wanted, <laughs> what I wanted to be when I grow up, what I wanted to do with my business life, so many people were coming up to me saying, you are doing all this amazing stuff with online coursework. Why don't you take it out to the world as your service? And, you know, I wish I had the story of immediately saying, oh my God, that's the best idea I ever heard. I ever heard. Um, I was skeptical for a little while. And, you know, this is two and a half years later, looking back on it, the best decision I ever could have made because I really, really love being able to focus really specifically on this model in my particular way and flavor and bring this value to the world and really inspire and guide these experts to create their dream businesses, which is really at the core of my passion. Hmm. Uh, I bet you're really glad right now that you did make that leap of faith. Isn't it? I mean, in hindsight, everything works out, right? Right. You just just never know in the moment what it's going to look like, but yeah. And for our community, I know a lot of people are looking at how do I quickly scramble to get online? (laughs) Like, how do I, how do I make that pivot? How do I make that shift? And So I know what we're going to talk about today could really open up a huge amount of possibility for someone who's maybe been struggling with this transition of getting a way to transfer their knowledge, their programs into the online space. You know, one of the things I've heard you talk about, and I was really curious about this, it it got me super curious. You've mentioned in different things I've seen you post um, that a lot of online courses get a bad reputation. Why do you think that is? Mm. One so one of my taglines is no more crappy courses because I feel you know we've all taken that three hundred and fifty dollar course that you buy and then you're like that could have been a freebie. Um, 
And I think the reason is because as experts, as consultants, as coaches, as trainers, whoever it is that wants to create a course, there is so much value that we bring in our interactions with our clients. And when we take that away completely, so I'm talking about the online courses that really have no interaction with the creator, it's just really hard to create any kind of an impact. It creates more questions than answers for a lot of people. And from my experience in my own personal life and how I see other people experience these courses is they will start it and then they will hit a roadblock. They'll have a question and then there's nowhere to get an answer. There's no way to reach the creator, the expert to be able to move through that block. And so that we put that course on the shelf and it starts, you know, catching dust and and sitting there and it's $300, $50 we wasted, we'll never see again. And so one of the biggest misses is that there is no touch point to the creator. Mm, I I could relate to that. I'm not a big online course taker because of that very reason. And so I would probably fall into that category of like, yeah, I'd rather, you know, pay 15 times more to get that more personalized attention. Exactly. there is a reason and a a big value to offering online courses. You know, if you were going to hit like the top two or three reasons why an online course is really valuable for you to offer your clientele, what would those be? Mm, Absolutely. The first one, and I love to lead with client value because I, I think all of us are in this business to create a difference in someone's life. And I think that when we have a teaching component in our work, it is so much more powerful when that teaching component is delivered via an online course. It allows our clients to take in the information on their own schedule, on their time, in a way that works best for their brains. So, you know, for some people with kids, it might be after their kids are put to bed and they grab a glass of wine, they put their feet up on, you know, on the coffee table and they take that course. Or it's first thing in the morning when their brain is at their best. They get to rewind, fast forward, take notes, really interact with the content in a way they never could if you were teaching them this content live. So my first and favorite reason is because it just is better for the client. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm on board with that. I would say same, same. And I also think for you, it's a very powerful way to leverage what you teach and not have to like literally get individually with each and every client and and teach the same thing over and over and over again. So it's a real, it's a great way for you to free up some time to do. I don't know about you, but I like that, that space where I get to be creative and, and kind of cover some new topics. Exactly. It's that clone yourself model, right? Do you ever wake up in the morning and you said, I wish there were just more of me to be able to do this. And that's exactly what it allows you to do. It allows you to clone yourself. And you know, there's, I think we all reach the point in our business where we're like, I have said this thing over and over again, 5,000 times. Yes, it's a valuable piece of information, but I don't want to say it again. That's the thing that becomes the course, right? It's the thing that we say over and over again, that there's no value in us saying it live, that we no longer have to say it 5,000 times over. We get to reclaim that time for ourselves. And I always say, you know, people are like, should I work harder? Should I take more time? And What I love about it is we get to decide, you know, if you just want to take that time you're going to save by delivering your content via digital modules to spend more time with your family. You know, maybe these days you might be homeschooling your kids for the first time or, or you want to go play in the mountains. You want to go, you know, travel the world, hopefully someday soon, you know, whatever it is for you. Awesome. Or if you want to take that time and energy into building your business in a different way too, you now, you're just reclaiming that time back for whatever it is you want to do with it, which I think Mm. is so amazing. Yeah. Well said. And I I don't know if you run into this, but I think there's a boredom factor that comes up for a lot of creative entrepreneurs. They're bored with the thing they created, but their clients are just figuring out it's valuable. So I would imagine that would also be a great way to, to, you know, capitalize on content you've worked so hard to create when you've gotten bored and you want to move on to something else. You know, I love, I've, I've, yes, I love that point so much. And, um, it is so true because we just, when we see the same content, our own content, it could be so brilliant, but yeah, there's a boredom factor that just naturally comes in. Yeah. You've seen it a million times where other people are going, Oh, I didn't know you did that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater as they say. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Such a weird saying, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, I would love if you could share a little bit, because I know this comes up for people a lot. Um, is there a sweet spot in the trajectory of your business evolution and your offerings where it's the right time to bring an online course into your offerings versus maybe the wrong time too early, too late. Like, I don't know. Do you, ha do you find that there's like a sweet spot time for people? Yes. Um, I'll start with the wrong time and it, it can be done too soon. And I say, you know, I don't like to put a time frame on it because everybody's situation is different. I say you're ready to create an online course when you are, when you consider yourself an expert in the topic have created a system that is repeatable where you do find yourself getting bored and saying the same thing over and over again. And also um, when you are, when you have enough experience teaching and coaching to people, you're not just an expert in your own head, but you actually have validation of your expertise and you have walked people through your systems and programs and you have seen how that information is being received by people. Cause I think sometimes we think we know what we're, well, we know what we're talking about, but it doesn't necessarily get received the same way on the other side. And so when we create an online course, we lose a lot of the feedback of how our information is being received, uh, especially if we create a course that does not have personal interaction, then we completely let go of having any feedback. And that's another reason actually why the online courses can be um, ineffective is because somebody will create something and put it out there and they'll have absolutely no feedback on how the various pieces are being received other than maybe metrics such as time spent in the course, completion rates, things like that, that aren't necessarily very valid or important. So once you have taught people and you know how, how it works, once you have a system that is repeatable, and once you are a valid expert in that, um, I think that is the perfect time to create your online course. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I love, I love the knowing that because I think a lot of people try and start it too early uh, and they're, they're not getting traction with it because they haven't established those three uh, factors that you just laid out for us. It is very tempting to fall onto the bandwagon of the recurring income, the uh, passive income, you know, whatever the terminology is these days in the market and say, I want to drink margaritas on the beach. Well, you know, well, money's coming into my bank account. And I think people see that and say, yes, I want that. And there's work that needs to be done before that's a reality. Agreed. Agreed. You know, I'm going to ask a question that I would imagine many of our listeners uh, is surfacing right now. We have a lot of people who are so busy. They have a business that is keeping them so full, so, uh, and maybe overworking already because they do have a one-to-one -one, uh, business model, or, you know, maybe they're balancing, uh, creating something new while uh, they're working in a service business that's unrelated somehow. What advice would you give to someone whose reason for not starting this is they are so busy and they can't find the time? Mm, absolutely. And, and that's such a great question because yeah, even more so recently than ever, especially people with children with, you know, the different realities of how schooling systems work now, people have less, a lot of people have less time now. And there's two things I say to that. The first one is really, really create that vision for yourself of why you want to create the scaled leveraged business and what's on the other side of it for you. So if today you're working those that 40 hours, 50, 60 hours a week, whatever it is, and your goal, let's say with the online course model is to free up time, really connect with that place and time when you are now working 20 hours a week and you have all that time to spend with family, you have all that time to spend doing fun things, whatever it is you want to do. So really commit to the why. Um, the reality is we do have time. You know, if we track, one of the things I really love doing is for about a week or so, just tracking my time when I think I don't have time and all of a sudden, okay, like, well, there's 10 minutes on Instagram. There's another 10 minutes on Instagram. There's 30 minutes, you know, on Facebook. There's so many pockets of time that we can reclaim if we just committed to saying, this is important to me. This is what I want to put in, invest my time into so that on the other side of it, I have this dream lifestyle business that I've always wanted to have. And it does take a little bit of an investment on the front end. And then the second piece is 
The most time consuming thing that I see people get stuck in is overwhelm and indecision and frustration because there's so much information out there. There's so much, so many free resources. And, you know, I, I know I contribute to that too with my free resources, but <laughs> it's so easy to start downloading every free thing there is. And then some will, you know, some will conflict with each other. And, you know, you talk to people who say, I want to create a course, but I'm spending two hours a day just trying to figure out what it is I want to do. And so, you know, I, I'm biased, obviously, because I, you know, I am hired to do this, but I say, get help me or somebody else who is an expert in this topic, who can help you create a very simple to follow step-by-step process get rid of the overwhelm, get rid of the overthinking and really compress the timeline. So it is still going to take time. It's just going to take a lot less time. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Good advice. Um, Do you ever run into people who avoid doing an online course because they've got um, technology fears Mm. (laughs) or, or they feel like they're not, (laughs) they don't want to like kind of like move into this world of all the technology and the moving parts? Less so now that used to be one of the biggest, one of the biggest things I used to hear is like, well, I'm not a techie person or something like that. Right now we all live on zoom, like it or not. We know, we know at least how to use zoom. We know technology is a lot less scary. And so the few things I say is if I could do it, you could do it. I am not a tech person. I've never been a tech person. I never will be the software. The programs that are available right now are like drag and drop. They're so simple and straightforward to use that anyone can do it. The second piece of it, and especially with technology and, um, I think everyone listening who's used technology for anything, either on the provider or the client side, don't expect it to be perfect. Expect it to malfunction, expect something to go wrong. No one is expecting a perfect experience. So taking off that perfectionist hat can relieve a lot of those false expectations of what it should be. Now I say strive for excellence, but just not perfection and know that the tech stuff is gonna, it, there'll, be, there'll be hitches along the way and that is okay. I think there's a whole episode in this idea of striving for excellence, but not expecting perfection. Like Mm -hmm. that is a huge mindset shift for so many people that get stuck in that perfection paralysis. It's so hard. I'm, 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 I talk myself out of it every single day. Me too. (laughs) (laughs) But it's true. I think if you're going to be in this world and you're going to be in the the client services of any kind, you have to let go of this idea that you're going to get to perfect. And it's hilarious. I have this thing with my own mastermind uh, members where once in a while, something just doesn't go right. Or, you know, there's a technology snafu or we miss a step. And, and, you know, usually it's me, you know, getting in the way of my team trying to execute on something. And I always say, yeah, I blew it. Sorry. And, and they're like, we love that you're so authentic and you know, you're not trying to make it look perfect. It gives us permission to not be perfect. And I think it's true. Like we, we have to recognize this is, there is no perfect. I love permission to not be perfect. Absolutely. And I, and when somebody, you know, that they look up to like you does that, it does give them that permission to relax a little bit and say, okay, if, if Melanie can get away with it, well, I could too. <laughs> yeah. At least I own it. Right. It's like, yes, exactly. I own, I'm never going to get it perfect. Thank you for being patient with me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if someone's listening in and recognizing this is their time, this is the time when they, they're ready to build an online course and make that transition to offering and packaging things in, in the, the online format, uh, you have a tool that you'd like to share with our listeners. I do. So the Thriving Online Program Blueprint is the system that I have designed specifically for experts who are ready to monetize their expertise and and serve in a bigger way. And it is such an amazing, I'm obviously biased, but it is an amazing step-by-step system that allows them to create something fully custom for their particular needs in a simple and clear step-by-step format. And that's the Thriving Online Program Blueprint. It's just a 90-day program. That's how I work with my clients. And for those who just want a little, the first step for a lot of experts, and I know this is one of the challenges that I often hear, is they decide they want to create a course. But as experts, there's usually a breadth of expertise we have. And I'll, I'll give away one of the secrets of a great online course is it solves one problem for one particular client avatar. 
And when you look at it through that lens, it could be kind of hard to take all of our wisdom and expertise and filter it through that lens. So for the people who are ready to move forward and just really need some help dialing in what their topic is, I have the profitable online topic cheat sheet, which is a combination of brainstorming prompts and then a scorecard that allows you to numerically pick what the best topic is for your particular uh, area of expertise. So then you can move forward with the rest of the process, knowing exactly what problem you're going to solve for what um, client type, client avatar. And they get that, where's the best place? Do, or you want me to just link it up in the show notes for everybody? If that would probably be best. Great. So head over to the show notes for today's episode and whatever platform you're listening on, you'll see it in the notes for the show. And we'll make sure that you get access to pick your perfect online program topic in under 10 minutes. Very rocks method uh, in your title, by the way. I redid I it, it after we talked. Did you? <laughs> oh, you I did. I did. <laughs> I always love when when little t- uh, tips help my guests uh, really they, like, have yeah. a buzzworthy uh, topic. It's awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Great. Um, so... And I highly recommend Jane's work. I've had the privilege to get to know her over the last few months a bit. And, and you know, she, she really does strive for excellence and has amazing programs. So this is a great tool to offer. Um, you know, Jane, this is the point in our conversation where I love finding out about your boldest move. Uh, you made a bold move to uh, get into your own business at some point, but what do you think is the boldest decision or the boldest action you've taken up to now to get where you are today? Yeah. You know, the boldest move was starting the business fully on my own. I mentioned that my first transition was when I left corporate was starting a business with a partner and as scary as that was, My partner is someone who has started businesses before, who's been successful as an entrepreneur. So in hindsight, I didn't realize how much risk was taken out. And that was great. And that's where I needed to be. And when that relationship fell apart and it was just me, my first thought was, how do I replace my partner? How do I find somebody else to hide behind? How do I find someone else with a brilliance when I didn't trust my own? And being able to work through that and say, you know what? I've got this. I could do it. I've got all the wisdom expertise needed to create a business was bold, challenging. I mean, just, you know, and and the most amazing best decision I've ever made in my life. Hmm. I can see that. Yeah, sometimes the leaving the safety net is the bold step we have to take to get where we need to go. In this case, it was a little bit of a getting pushed out of, of, of the safety net, which I think was probably part of part of uh, the boldness of it was it was a little less, it was a little less optional. <laughs> well, you know, that's what I call the universal two by four. Oh, if you really want this dream business, guess what? We're going to take the safety net away. And that's exactly what happened. Yeah, leaving corporate was just me saying, all right, I'm, I'm ready for the next thing. Cool, I'm going to be brave, kind of. And then this was like, yeah, the universe is like, oh, you think you're going to be a business owner? Well, now you're going to be a business owner. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. You know, I know um, sometimes we don't always feel comfortable sharing these, these maybe messy parts of our journey, the parts that are, weren't easy, but every time someone like yourself who has achieved excellence, who has achieved success, shares these more uh, real and raw moments, I think it re- gives the rest of us this clarity. Oh yeah. Okay. This is a good thing. I get to do this in order to get where I ultimately want to be in my business. So bravo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today and inspiring the Amplify community about how online offerings can be so powerful and bring so much value to not just our clients, but to allow us to really reach greater levels of, of dream business for ourselves. Thank you so much for having me on here, Melanie. It was such a, such an honor. You're welcome. Well, we'll be continuing this conversation in the Amplify Your Success community. Um, I don't, I want you to go beyond this being just an idea. This is not just a nice idea. This is a real growth opportunity for you 
let's continue this conversation. Hopefully we can inspire Jane to, to come on into that conversation with us as we're airing this episode. Tell us how you can bring this idea of an online offering into your business. And do you need support? Is this something you have questions about? I'll tag Jane in it and she'll be there. Hopefully we can, we can get you over there to, to uh, engage with our community about that as well. Because this is about results, not just great information. And this is how we get results as we say, I'm going to just take action on one thing I discovered today. Mm, absolutely. I would love to engage and I'm a huge fan of action. So I'm excited to help everyone take that first next best step. Woohoo. All right. We'll see you over in the Amplifier Success community and keep the inspiration going, my friends. We'll see you in the group. Bye now. This is Melanie Benson, your host. Thanks so much for listening in today. If you want to catch up on any of the show notes and circle back on any of the resources we shared in today's show, head on over to the show page at AmplifyYourSuccessPodcast.com. And remember, you amplify your results faster when you're in a community of other people who are moving and shaking. Join us at AmplifyYourSuccessCommunity.com. One last thing. When you've gained insight from today's episode, help us share that and inspire other people by heading over to iTunes, subscribing, and give it a review. iTunes absolutely loves seeing these reviews pop up, and it actually helps boost my show's visibility. So I would be super grateful for your reviews. And as always, I love seeing your shares of these episodes on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Come find me over there. Tag me in your shares. I'll give you some social media love right back. So see you next week for another inspiring episode of Amplify Your Success Podcast.